Rhonda, your goddess of good times on USA, up all night. What would the 90s be like without up all night with Rhonda Shear? Uh, pretty boring. Of all the requests I get, this one is probably the most wanted, just like Shear herself. So let's take a spin with USA's most bubbly, vivacious, and witty host and stay up all night, or at least through this column. Now, Up All Night didn't start off with Sheer. It originally starred the, well, not so sexy Gilbert Gottfried. Then Caroline Schlick came on to take over Friday while Gottfried continued with Saturdays. Rhonda entered the hearts and loins of the late night viewers. There she stayed for nearly a decade until she was replaced by rolling graphics and more well-known movies. Also, we're going a little off book for this one because if you've seen Up All Night, then you understand why. Sadly, after putting this column together, Gilbert Godfrey passed away at the age of 67. I saw so many people saying that the first time they were ever introduced to Gilbert was on Up All Night. When I was a kid, it felt like he was everywhere. The guy with the funny voice who had no problem voicing his opinion. He was hilarious on Up All Night. He always had something smartass to say about whatever craptastic B-movie they were showing. Rhonda and Gilbert were a fantastic team, and watching them together, you could tell there was a lot of love. Gilbert was one I thought would be around forever. Luckily, thanks to all of his work, we get to keep him around for some time. Thanks, Gilbert. You will certainly not be forgotten. I want to thank you guys for watching horror TV shows we miss. And ask if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. I'm sure many of you will agree that the most appealing thing about Up All Night was Rhonda's uncanny ability to make you feel like you were the only one watching. She was like a really wild friend who enjoyed watching B-movies with you, and her being exquisitely hot was a total bonus. I can't think of anyone at the time rocking those outfits like she did, other than Kelly Bundy. It was like Rhonda had stepped right off of a video by Warrant or Whitesnake, but what was cool about her was that she seemed obtainable in the sense that she was genuine. She was the first B-movie guide for a lot of teens at the time. Rhonda didn't go as in-depth on the movies as she presented, but she presented the hell out of them and kept us entertained in between segments. At times, whatever she was doing could be way more interesting than the actual movie they were showing. Rhonda said that she definitely tried to watch the movies after they did the shows, which I think is pretty cool. USA let Rhonda play up her outfits and the show as much as she wanted. She said that they didn't really seem to care about what she did. You can really tell, especially when the foot love goes from uh, quickly panning the camera to Rhonda's feet to wool blown foot smash videos a la Peggy Hill. <laughs> Thirsty folks would even write in and request these shots so Rhonda would indulge from time to time. The girl knows what her audience wants and you can't blame her for going for it. What was amazing is that this didn't come off as desperate at all. It's actually fun because she makes it fun. She's never alienating her audience, even when she refers to herself in the first person. That's what a legendary lady does. For many growing up in the 80s and 90s, Rhonda was their first guide to horror and the best of the worst movies. Up All Night came before Monster Vision, even though Joe Bob wasn't that far away on TMC doing drive-in theater. Rhonda just had the ability to reach a larger audience being on USA. And Rhonda's time on air, you got to see movies like Basket Case, 976 Evil, Chopping Mall, Class of Newcomb High, Hello Mary Lou Prom Night 2, Spookies, Witch Academy, Shocker, and the list goes on and on. The format of the show would usually be one of two things, Rhonda's bedtime play and Rhonda out and about on field trip. In a lot of episodes, Rhonda would roll and romp around on a pink heart-shaped bed. She would crack jokes, deliver the current events, read fan mail, and make us part of her world with Rondavision. Who didn't want to be Rhonda's bedtime buddy getting sizzle kisses? The other half I refer to as field trips. Rhonda would go to Bike Week, the WWE, WrestleMania, rodeos, tailgates, monster truck rallies, auto shows, and much, much more. It was exciting to see what Rhonda would be up to on any given Friday night. If you were stuck at home, then you got to go on the journey with her. Also, this intro will take you back. I watch it and immediately get transported back to the early 90s. If you recall, it's basically footage of LA at night with some cheesy rock and guitar music over it. It pairs perfectly with the show. What a masterpiece. So now, here's a look at a few of our favorite episodes. Rhonda at the Fangoria Horror Party, 1991. Movie shown, Vice Academy 1 and 2. Rhonda and Linnea Quigley dress up as cops because Vice Academy. That's all you need. 
Okay, no, what's great about this episode is the horror party itself. It's everything you would expect from a horror party from 1991. The scariest costume might be the random guy with the peewee mask. He's handcuffed and staring into the void, then just staring at Linnea and Rhonda. There's also short segments with Joe Dante and Screaming Mad George. I love seeing Screaming Mad George's creations. Some of them are actually from the movie Society, and then some pieces he had been working on at the time. I'm not even sure how to describe it, but if you've experienced the weird orgy that is society, then you can imagine. Nightmare fuel. <laughs> There's so many cool creatures, prosthetics, busts, and lots of jokes at the expense of Gilbert Godfrey because aren't they all? Towards the end of the party, Rhonda and Linnea handcuff this guy who was dressed as a cop and you can tell this was the best day of his life. Rhonda also fulfills one of my dreams of sitting in Predator's lap. Rhonda and Linnea go shopping, 1992. Movies shown, Firehouse, and Ocean Drive Weekend. Yes, more Linnea. Linnea actually shows up in many of the episodes. While Rhonda can easily entertain all on her own, she and Linnea have excellent chemistry together and Linnea is a rock star. The girls do some shopping together, gossip about movies, and pose in the aisles with boxes of taco shells. There's also quite a few bangers in this episode as well. You've got some Van Hagar and Motley Crue. Howling 2's Sybil Danning also shows up and plays dominatrix with toilet accessories. I hear your heartbeat. Rhonda does some foot fetish modeling over what I assume are boxes of Hungry Man and Stouffer's dinners. Directly after this, Rhonda runs into Mistress Jacqueline, who is beating the meat to the tune of Dr. Feelgood. You guys are getting some good imagery here, right? Night shopping at the grocery store in LA. It's Mistress Jacqueline. Bonus fact, the supermarket they filmed in was also used for supermarket sweep. Enjoy that one. Rhonda trapped in the lingerie store, 1992. Yes, I love 1992. Movie shown, Can't Buy Me Love, and Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. Rhonda traps herself inside a lingerie store during Christmas with three of her buddies, Linnea, Monique Gabrielle, and Rhea Cohn. Basically, the girls spend the episode trying on lingerie and dancing with themselves, as playmates should. You get the full-on exposure to the 90s tall panties, which are back in style, actually. I learned a lot from this episode, like the importance of toe cleavage, and that G-strings can make great slingshots. Monique at one point starts to make loud animal noises while brushing up against the fake tree. Hot. While this episode isn't exactly action-packed, watching all the girls be silly, play dress up, and hang out is guaranteed to make you smile. Also, it's a reminder to watch Silent Night, Deadly Night 4 because of Clint Howard and the magic of giving him lines like, NO FUCKING CHEESE! Rhonda also refers to Clint Howard as handsome, because he is. We love you, Clint. Rhonda meets Jason Voorhees, 1992. Movie shown, Friday the 13th, The New Beginning, and The New Blood. Who's the best co-host for Rhonda during a showing of Friday the 13th movies? Jason Voorhees himself, or some random dude dressed up as Jason. Rhonda plays cutesy with Jason and even gives him a makeover complete with eyeshadow and lipstick on his hockey mask. She even teased up his hair real high too. At some point, Jason disappears then comes back with Hannibal Lecter, who he has given his own complimentary makeover to. Isn't that nice? Homicidal maniacs can be rehabilitated. The guy in the Hannibal get up gets me though. How does one play Hannibal as both uninspired and creepy? I laugh my ass off when the camera guy cuts to Hannibal asking a bald mannequin to dinner. Jason brought me by to invite you for dinner. Later, there's birthday cake, baseball with a sledgehammer and stuffed animals, a foot bath, and slow dancing. This sounds amazing, right? That's because it is. Only Rhonda could get Jason to show his soft side. You can watch any of these on YouTube without the movies. Rhonda's channel has a ton of them as well. There's no official release, much like Joe Bob shows, but maybe they can put them together like Darcy has been working on Monster Vision. So, what happened to this show? Where's Rhonda now? Around the late 90s, USA decided to move to New York because they could no longer afford to film in LA. When the move came, so did a new producer who ended up being the nail in the coffin of the series. As Rhonda tells it, the producer wanted to go for a darker show, which was really the opposite of everything Rhonda had done previously. They had her tone down the sexy and made her do dumb and not so fun segments. Really dumb. This lasted the rest of the run even after they had brought in a new producer a couple of years later. In 1998, USA came under new management and decided they wanted to go for more classy programming. Shows were either revamped or canceled and unfortunately Up All Night was not meant to be classed up. Don't get me wrong, 
Ron is definitely a class act, but playing movies like Man Killers, Nightmare Sisters, and Wild Malibu Weekend may not be what the network wanted to use to appeal to the upscale viewers. Ron and Gilbert were both relieved of their hosting duties and replaced by the logo of the show, as I said earlier. Rhonda didn't do too bad for herself after the show ended, though. Before her gig on Up All Night, she was already a model, actress, and comedian. She had been on Happy Days, Married with Children, Full House, modeled for Playboy, released a comedy CD, and really never stopped working. Her biggest venture to date is the launch of her business, Sheer Enterprises. Rhonda came back to TV to sell lingerie with her name branded on it, QVC. In 2017, she released a book called Up All Night, From Hollywood Bombshell to Lingerie Mogul, Life Lessons from Accidental Feminists. Rhonda knows how to hustle. After the start of the pandemic, Rhonda got lonely and decided to launch a podcast called Rhonda Shear Social Hour. Here's a brief description from her site. The Rhonda Shear Social Distance Social Hour was started as a way to find connection and quarantine after the emergence of COVID-19 in Florida. Actress turned international lingerie mogul Rhonda Shear found that life in self-isolation had left her with extra time on her hands for the first time in a long time. Sure, she was Skyping into TV shopping appearances, Zooming for wine night with friends, and doing just the smallest amount of online shopping. But still, something was missing. Then it hit her. What better time to revisit her first love, staying up all night and hosting comedians, actors, musicians, and talent from around the world than a complete lockdown. If you miss spending time with Rhonda, this is the best way. Unless you want to spend time watching her segments from Up All Night on YouTube, as I mentioned before. You could always do both to show Rhonda you really, really love her. You could still write to her and be part of the Rhonda Fantasy Club. Where would we be without Rhonda? I know that for the time she was on air, she made a ton of people happy, especially boys if you get my drift. She was way more than just eye candy though. She kept a show that could have been easily just straight corny into something worth watching every Friday night. Rhonda, we miss staying up all night with you. Until next time, my couch companions.